Okay, good afternoon. Uh, we're group one. What we're going to be presenting on today is our research on exercise and the effect it has on the mental health of college students. I'm Caden Dunn. I'm Derek Kislaga. I'm Mark Kelly. I'm Ryan Van Noon. I'm Tanner Vestal. Cool. So what we're going to be touching on today is first our introduction and then second our literature review, um, the hypotheses, the variables, the independent and dependent, the sample plan, and then our analysis. So I'm going to cover just a quick introduction, kind of why we chose the topic we did. Uh, mental health is becoming an increasingly important topic in today's time. And unfortunately, with students' busy schedules trying to balance school, work, extracurricular activities, and our social lives, many students suffer from poor mental health. In fact, in a study from just this past October, one out of every four students described their mental health as poor. Um, another reason we chose this topic is since we already had to do the research and you guys need to listen to us talk for 15 minutes, uh, if we could help shed some light on some of the positives that exercise can have on your mental health, maybe you can motivate some of us to get to the gym a little more often. And then, um, we all know that exercise is good for us, but our, our study specifically studying the relationship between exercise and our mental health. So I'm going to go through a literature review as fast as I can here. Uh, exercise is defined as a planned, structured, and repetitive body movement intended to build and maintain physical strength. I uh, remember it's different than physical activity. Physical activity is just any uh, body movement produced by muscles that requires energy. Uh, it's recommended we try to get 30 minutes a day, three to five days a week. That's for the maximum benefits. And then it's very important that whatever routine we do get, we stick to that routine to see long-term results. Then mental health is our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. Um, the psychological factors we're concerned with in this study are depression, anxiety, and stress. It's important because it affects the way we think, feel, and act. Unfortunately, for someone suffering from poor mental health, even the smallest task can seem impossible to complete. And then several factors go into determining our mental health, including biological factors, family history, and life experiences. Then the last thing I need to do is just cover the source where I got most of my information from. This is an academic journal, literally called Exercise and Mental Health by Catherine Nich Nicholson and her associates. There's a huge study performed in Australia that had over 50,000 participants. Um, in one study of over 42,000, exercise was found to improve levels of anxiety. In another study of over 48,000, it was found to improve symptoms of depression. And finally, they believe that these changes are coming from the result of numerous psychological and physiological changes happening. Exercising regularly will reduce symptoms of depression. Um, so these symptoms could include lack of energy, loss of interest in activities, difficulty with schoolwork, etc. Uh, moving on to our second hypothesis, um, regular exercise will raise the level of mental health, resulting in reduced stress and anxiety. Um, and so, as a reminder um, to our first presentation, exercise is different for everyone. So um, you just have to find out what works best for you. This could mean a walk for one person and weightlifting for another. Um, also, exercising can be a temporary distraction from daily irritations that can reduce stress and anxiety. All right, next up, we got our variables here. For our dependent variable, we just did mental health in general. We measured this by using uh, the respondent's self-rating, one through 10. We chose to measure it subjectively because we can't really have the resources to measure it objectively. And then we had two independent variables in the study, the frequency and intensity of exercise. The frequency was just measured one to 10 based on how many hours per week you exercise. And the intensity was on the rated perceived exertion scale, which is also just one to 10. And then our sample plan. So we had 98 responses to our survey, 80 of which were viable. Um, the majority of our responses came from two articles that we put up in the Peak, uh, the Dome, and Jamrich, and then we also sent it out to a couple different sports teams on campus. Um, majority of the students that answered were from MU, but there was some from different universities as well. So as you mentioned, we had um, 90 participants, 80 were viable. 
these were sorted out. It was our, we only had 98, so we did it pretty manually. Um, if there was clearly some tampering or short amount of time, some people were going through this thing in 20 seconds and you physically cannot almost click fast enough in 20 seconds to go through it. Um, a lot of people were messing around with the ages, saying that they were like 105, and clearly anybody that's 105 is not exercising 10 hours a week with a 10 per, or like a level 10 of intensity. Um, so after we removed those, we came out to an average age of uh, just over 21, and average credits of 14.3, which is you know full-time students. You can see here we're pretty close to 50-50, um, male, female. We did have about 3.8 percent of um, classified under other or were not comfortable in telling us what they were identifying as. As you can see the class standing, mostly seniors, the same reasons a lot of everybody in here, I'm sure got a lot of seniors and juniors. Um, most people are upper class in this class. When you send it out to your friends, that's generally here you're gonna get right. Um, so we ended up going with regression analysis in our dependent and independent um, analysis. We were on like a scale of one to 10, so that was the, we just did what we had to go with, right? Um, first I ran it as a multiple, and that was not giving me good results. So then I ran them individually. Um, so what we have here is question eight, which is gonna be our dependent, is the self-assessed mental health that they are identifying as. Um, 10 would be hours per week exercise. Reminder that's on a scale of up to 10 hours per week. Anything over 10, people would just write in as 10. And question 11 is intensity of exercise. So if you look at question 10 up here on the top, the significance is way too high to be significant. So we would have to reformulate this study if I'm being completely honest with you guys. I'm not really happy with the way the results came out, even though we do, you know, we're at 3.4% 3, 3 error on the um, question 11 here, which is the intensity of the exercise. And I have a hard time agreeing with this correlation overall. Um, think that Caden will probably go over what we could have done better. Um, this graph on the bottom right here is just, I made it up, and you can see the uh, trending line is in red. So this is the self-rated intensity on the y-axis and mental health on the x-axis. And it does show a trend upwards, showing a positive correlation, but I have, uh, I'm not really satisfied with the results. <clears throat> Yeah, so in conclusion, um, obviously there's a positive correlation between mental health and the intensity of the workout. Uh, if we were to do this again, obviously if we had 80 viable results out of the 98, but we obviously need to get a larger sample size. Um, and then we also add different questions to the survey, survey as in like what's your mental health pre-workout and what's your mental health like post-workout.